ice field is a sonic landscape on a huge scale. It was written specifically for the acoustics of Davies Hall. Ice field is also a piece for solo organ and orchestra. So not only is the huge orchestra divided from the top balcony to some positions under the stage, but there's also the full power of the Rafati organ in Davies Hall. Brandt's compositions really create a huge world of sound. So you feel as a listener you're surrounded by a whole environment of music, some of it right under your nose and some of it very, very far away. Icefield is a magnanimous outpouring of ecstatic musical chaos. It's magnanimous in the sense that it is social. It's social because it involves a lot of people, but it really involves the audience because it's the audience that we're surrounding and embracing physically and logistically. Brad was this very slight little guy, but he was one of the wildest people I've met as far as his imagination and his just going for things as a musician. I'm just concerned that it doesn't sound like an organ. It should sound like a, like a gorilla more. He really got the idea that life in the 20th century had become such an assault on the senses and on the spirit that the only way to represent it was by having a number of different musical styles coming at you from many different directions. And there's a, an enormous amount of material and a huge contrast of material ranging from something that's evocative of Gregorian chant, the laughing figures in the trumpets, steel drums and percussion, and the use of the low uh, subsonic reeds of the organ, which on their own sound like nothing so much as a marine diesel engine. The hard part is, I have to let go of control. It's a jazz man's challenge in a way, I, I think. So my preparation for this didn't amount to a lot of keyboard work. It amounted to a lot of thinking and a lot of realizing that I actually didn't know what the hell to do. Although the piece gives the impression of being a kind of mobile, floating world collage, it is unbelievably well thought out. the effect of the way something will sound coming from the very top balcony as connected with something that's in some completely different location. The way that the different groups can be playing in different tempi and different meters simultaneously and the way it actually does work out in quite a specific way. That was remarkable to experience that. There's something to be said for balls of a composer who will write only a squiggly line in the context of 55 other people playing simultaneously in two or three other meters with Mahler level specifics in all of their indications. Sometimes it's vulgar and bass, sometimes it's downright funny and sometimes it's just confusing and sometimes you laugh and sometimes you giggle and, and sometimes you kind of feel a bit awkward and embarrassed too and all of those are, are legitimate reactions. In the hall, you have an experience of the music, which normally would be not something that you could re-experience in a recording. That's why it's been so exciting to be working on this partnership with Dolby to create a new technology in which these big spatial effects can be experienced. Early on, we experimented with trying to get the elements of the Brandt to localize properly within a normal surround format. We tried 5.1, 7.1, and some other hybrid formats. We just could not get it to be convincing. As soon as we started talking about and experimenting with doing it in Dolby Atmos, all of a sudden the whole sonic world changed and it allowed us to be able to represent the piece the way it should be heard so that the listener has a very clear sense that there is activity behind them, top of them, in front of them, all over, and be able to sort of pinpoint uh, very accurately where that sound is coming from. And it must be great to be able to experience that. For instance, if you happen to be sitting over there in the orchestra right, the bass drum, which is nearly deafening to me over here at the organ, uh, has got to be an extremely profound experience. <laughs> and the, the, the fact that a whole jazz band uh, is up in the balcony 
and not even seen by some of the audience, must lend a, an incredible aspect of surrealism. The recordings took place in 2014, and at that time, we did not know how we were going to deliver this. John Luce from Dolby happened to be in the audience and afterwards came running up to me and said, we have to do something with this piece. And I said, well, what are we going to do? And he says, I don't know, <laughs> but we have to do something with this. And the combination of that partnership uh, gelled over the subsequent years until here we are in 2019. And the technology that Dolby now has to be able to do not only the Atmos production, but also to do a binaural representation of it is fairly mature. The fact of the matter is he wrote the piece for Davies Symphony Hall. Once you hear it in Atmos, you realize that the compositional part of the hall is as important as any of the playing you hear. Henry would have been delighted by this. It's a piece that I think will be fascinating for audiophiles just as the experience of sound, but also something which will offer people a very different musical tastes, uh, a chance to experience the, the spontaneity and interesting, emotionally affecting qualities that the piece really does have.